Wanted to start off nice and gentle with question one. This is the kind of thing which hopefully we get to a point where you can do a question like this kind of automatically, almost without thinking. You look at it, and just like if I said to you five times four, you don't have to start calculating. You involuntarily think of 20, right? Like the answer comes instantly. That's what we call fluency. This is the kind of thing that you're going to be doing hundreds of times in a single exam when you get to year 11 next year, let alone year 12. Okay, so you want it to be something that you're pretty happy to do. What do we think of the answer? Satisfied with it? Yep, fantastic. Uh, me too. Um, I will point out, actually I'll use another color to do this. One of the common things that students will do wrong, you're like, how, how, how hard is it to stuff up a question like this, right? Well, this is correct, and then a lot of students, I've seen this hundreds of times, will helpfully say, oh, I know what to do with this, I can solve that, and then give me an answer at the end, right? Have a look, what's the word that tells you, there's only one word in the question, that that's not what I'm to do? It's factorized, right? So you always pay attention to what the question's actually asking you to do, and it is actually quite important in numerous situations sometimes to only factorize and not to solve. So that's just a minor thing. Question two takes a bit more work. So just having a look first at our answer down the bottom. Can I get some agreement? Show of hands. Okay, wonderful. So that's a good sign, but we can still get right answers with wrong reasoning. So let's all look together. Um, helpfully, we've got the working here. Looking line by line, tell me. Uh, I'm gonna get the wisdom of the crowd here, right? From one line to the second, to the third, to the fourth, etc. you should all be able to tell me what simplification or what change or what manipulation happened, okay? So I'm deliberately not gonna call on the person who wrote this because she knows, right? So I'm gonna go from line one to line two. What's going on here? Who's brave enough to stick up their hand the and tell me? Making the base the same. So just going back to this other color. Okay, very good, well done, I'm pleased. Uh, the reason why we have this issue with the first line, different bases, they're not gonna talk just like when you've got different fractions with different denominators. Yeah, you've got to get them talking the same language. So that looks great. Um, this is correct, by the way, but maybe just in case in future you get something a little more complicated, this, which in a sense doesn't add anything, right? But this is probably like a teeny bit clearer. So you know like oh, where the two cubed come from. Eight and two cubed is pretty obvious. But later on, there'll be a lot more algebra flying around. You're like, what's what? It's helpful to write things like this to communicate clearly. Wonderful, we've got the same base. What about from line two to line three? Someone else, yeah. Okay, so the indices here, this part here and this part here, because the bases are the same, we don't need to worry about them anymore. So then we can just focus on those indices. By the way, it really doesn't matter that much, but in case you're curious, this whole thing is called a power. Like two to the power of five, we would say 32 is a power of five, so the whole thing is that. I know colloquially, we sometimes just call the five the power, but it's actually an, an index or an exponent. Anyway, you probably don't worry about it, but that is actually what the language means. So we've got this. We don't have an exponential at all anymore. Can we finish it off? What happens here? What are we actually aiming to do? Like Once you get to this point, both of these lines are kind of heading towards the same goal. We have a name for this. You know what it's called? Yeah. We're solving for x, we're making x the, starts with an s, the subject, right? That's what solving means. Okay, now I didn't ask anyone to write up the answer for three because there was this ambiguity about like, how do we phrase the answer, right? Uh, who put some decimal places on their answer? A few people, yeah, okay. Who just left it as a whole number? About the same number, okay. Now. Because I didn't phrase it, like no one's right or wrong here, okay? But I'll give you an opinion as to what I think is most sensible in this situation. It says, how many years would it take for five grand to double? And then they give you this information, they, me. I gave you this information, and then there's this compounding period here, right? Now I think, I'm gonna put my, um, my pole, my fag in the ground to say a whole number is probably a more sensible answer here because of this part right here, it's compounded annually. So what answer did we get as a decimal place? The people who gave me a decimal place, what was it? 7.27. 7.27, okay. So at seven, after seven years, have we got there? We haven't, because what is it? It's like 9,000 and something or other. Maybe you punched it into your calculator, right? So we're not there at seven, we agree on that. At 7.1 years, how much money is in the bank account? 
it's still that 9,000 and whatever, right? Because this thing hasn't taken place yet, right? So you have to wait all the way to the end of the year. So therefore, our answer of eight it's probably more sensible and it's actually a sneaky question because you have to round up you're not rounding to the closest number you're actually rounding to the number that answers the question make sense okay so if you wrote a uh, decimal I wouldn't call that wrong but I think eight years is a better answer in the context those are my notifications sorry uh, in the context of the question let's turn those off